Hi again, everyone. Gary Digit Williams here on Boxing Along the Beltway. Our news and notes for this week. And uh, it, what is going on in this area over the last, this first quarter of 2016 continues just to boggle my mind. Later on in the podcast, I've got a big announcement about yet another big card that is coming to the D.C. area. And uh, it's going to be something else to, to hear. So we know about February 27th at the that's the Saturday at the uh, Washington Convention Center, the King's Motions car. We talked about that in detail last week. We talked about March the 5th, the next Saturday, Saturday, March the 5th. Uh, that's the Golden Boy Promotions car that features Luis uh, Ortiz taking on Tony the Tiger Thompson. Uh, we've got some more on the way. It's going to be something you you want to stay with me on this one. But let's go back a little bit. Let's go about this week because we have a uh, couple of Beltway boxers that will be fighting on TV uh, this coming Friday, February the 19th. Uh, we have, first of all, Jerry the King's son Odom. Will be on a card that'll be on a showtime card from boardwalk hall in lang city we talked about that one a couple weeks ago and uh jerry odom who is 13 and 2 with 12 ko's he needs this win badly because and it won't be easy but he needs to win because he's lost two of his last three or be one to disqualification the other one was the knockout that uh he suffered at the hands of samuel clarkson back on uh, uh july 17th of last year um, but he still needs a win. No question about that. And it may not be easy against Ronald Akeem Ellis. He is out of, he's known as Flatline, by the way, out of Lynn, Massachusetts. He's 12 and 0 with 10 KOs coming off a second round TKO over Jazz Phillips at the forming link in uh, Inglewood, California. Um, he has not fought. Ellis has not fought anybody near the caliber of um, Jerry Odom, whereas Odom has fought a guy who's a couple guys who's undefeated. And uh, of course, Samuel Clarkson was 14 and three before their bout. And um, actually looking at uh, Ronald Ellis's, Ellis's record, the last guy he fought that had an over 500 record was Jose Perez, uh, who was uh, five, four and one when he, when Ellis fought him at on May in May of 2014. So he hasn't fought nearly the competition. Jerry Odom has, and uh, has not fought anybody the caliber of Jerry Odom. So although Ellis is, is pretty much the A-side fighter in this situation, Odom can do some damage and really get him keep himself in the mainstream in the super middleweight division. So uh, this is a big bout for him, part of a, I think it's a quadruple header on Showtime, starting around 10 o'clock Eastern time uh, from the Boardwalk Hall in Atlantic City. But prior to that, we have Baltimore welterweight, uh, I'm sorry, super welterweight Malik Iceman Hawkins. He will take on Cody Peterson of, of Liberty, Missouri. That'll be in a four round contest at the Winter Vegas Casino and Resort in Sloan, Iowa. And that bout is scheduled to be televised on CB, the CBS Sports Network around eight o'clock Eastern time on uh, Friday night. So, again, some great bouts. Uh, again, more beltway boxes being seen across the country. And it should be very interesting to see how things work as we go forward uh, in 2016. Now, just a reminder, uh, back on uh, coming up on Saturday, February the 20th, the 2016 uh, Washington Golden Gloves begin. And we're going to have the juniors and the novice uh, division. We, we're not going to go over the, the whole uh, bout sheet. They're about oh, 24. 25 bouts scheduled for the show on the 20th at the Sugar Ray Leonard Community Center. That's 7700 Barlow Road in Palmer Park, Maryland. And uh, you can see the whole bout sheet on the blog, Boxing Along the Beltway, coming up. And so uh, they'll have uh, bouts uh, coming up on all the next few Saturdays, February 27th, March 5th. Of course, we'll be at the pro shows. We'll be able to bring you any... Uh, We'll bring you some. Uh, we'll bring you the results, of course, on the blog. But uh, uh, that'll be that'll be that situation. The semifinals will be March twelfth and March nineteenth. Now, I gave you the wrong date for the um, Washington final. I, I think I said April fifth last week. It is in fact on Saturday, April the second. April the second, and that will be a very significant weekend, as we'll talk about in just a moment. But. Uh, that will be the championship finals for the Washington division and the regional championships we said last week will be Saturday, April 30th at 
Rosecroft Raceway. Now, of course, coming up later on in February, on February 27th, Mike Yes Indeed Reed, along with Emmanuel Taylor, they'll be on the Terrence Crawford uh, Hank Lundy card on uh, at Madison Square Garden in New York City on Saturday, February 27th. So while we are getting... Uh, bring you the live coverage of the King's Promotions card at the Washington Convention Center once we get there uh, for my duties as public address announcer at Coppin State University. Uh, we'll head on over to the Convention Center, get uh, join, the ba- join the card in progress, and we will um, bring you updates on what Emmanuel Taylor and Mike Reed uh, have done throughout that evening on the undercard of Terrence Crawford and Hank Lundy. Then on March the 12th, we are hearing about a card that will feature Thomas Top Dog Williams Jr. taking on Edwin LaBamba Rodriguez. And that will be on uh, Saturday, March 12th. I, I don't remember where that bout's going to be held. I, I'll get that to you uh, probably next week, where the bout's going to be held. But that's will be on television. We'll get the details on that. And there is word that Jared Hurd will be on that card. I think part of it's going to be on CBS. And part of the card will be on uh, Showtime. So that's that's the way I understand it. But that'll be Saturday, March the 12th coming up. Uh, so two more boxes possibly on television as well. I think Thomas is the co-feature. Thomas Williams is the co-feature. So he will be on television on Showtime. Jared Hurd may make the CBS broadcast of that show. Now, that brings us to the big news of this week. And we are just hearing about this. I would say in the last probably less than 24 hours, I got word of this and I got confirmation of this. Can't tell you where I got it from, but I do know it, people who know what they're talking about. You want to mark down on your calendar, and this is no April Fool's joke, but it will be Friday, April the 1st. The site, the DC Armory, and it will be the card that features Adrian Bronner taking on Ashley Theophane. That is the main event on that card. Uh, Robert Easter, who's been here a few times in Washington, D.C. area, I believe is probably in the co-feature. The undercard is scheduled to feature the likes of Anthony Peterson, Javante Davis, Patrick Harris, Kareem Martin, and Shingis Khan Tazabai, all on all Beltway boxers on the undercard of this show Friday, April the 1st. So you look at that weekend, you've got the big pro show Friday, April 1st at the uh, DC Armory, followed by the Washington Golden Gloves Finals at Rose Croft, which we will bring you live right here on the Box on Beltway Google app for Android, by the way. And uh, that'll be on Saturday, April the 2nd. So that's a huge weekend to start off. And again, that's what this first quarter of 2016 has been like. It has been just incredible, big time bouts, big time cards with our big time Beltway boxes being a major part of it. Not always in the main event, uh, some in the co feature, but very prominently involved in these big cards. And uh, that's the way it's been, folks. Once again, so let's, let's take a look at what we have now. We have Saturday, April, uh, Saturday, February 27th, the Washington Avengers Center. That's King's Promotions card. We went through that card last week. Followed by Saturday, March 5th, the very next Saturday, March 5th, uh, at the D.C. Armory. And then you have the Washington Golden Gloves going throughout the months of February and March into April. And then Friday, April 1st. Adrian Bronner taking on actually Ashley Theophane. That's a done deal. April 2nd, the Washington Golden Gloves Championship. So if you're not a Beltway boxing fan by now, there's something wrong with you. I'm sorry. I mean, this is an incredible time to be a Beltway boxing fan. And there's some things coming up in the pike that it makes things even better. I mean, with all the, the boxers traveling all over the country, being a part of uh Big cards all around the country. Some of the notoriety we've gotten with uh, people getting endorsements like Dusty Harrison and Sam Crossett being involved in the, in the well-known DC uh, commercial. There's just so much going on in this area that uh, it's a wonderful time. It's always a great time to be a Beltway boxing fan, but no better. Probably since the 90s than it's been to be a Beltway boxing fan than it is 
right now, folks. This is just incredible. It, it really it is it, it is it is continuing to boggle my mind, and I'm glad we're getting a little respite because once Saturday, actually once Friday starts with Hawkins and Oldham, and then Saturday with the first round of, of the Washington Golden Gloves. That by the way will be the juniors and the novice primarily. Uh, it's going to get crazy. It's going to be crazy throughout the next couple of months. And you'll get all the information, all the details right here on the Box Long Belt, a Google app for Android, and on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio.com, on YouTube, and of course the blogs, Box on the Beltway.blogspot.com, and on ProAmFightTalk.blogspot.com. Speaking of which, Juan Marshall doing a little better. Uh, he is my buddy's doing doing better, getting himself squared away. He will not be a part of these cards coming up in February and in March. Uh, he's trying to get his rest going. So hopefully by April, April 1st, um, Juan will be at ringside by my side, uh, telling all the details about what's going on in this situation. So it's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, a couple of things before we get out of here, though. Uh, one person I want, I want to talk about real quick before we get out of here. Um, I, I, w- during the year review, uh, I talked about some of the first families in Beltway Boxing. And uh, I did it surrounding uh, the passing of Charlie Tuttle back in January of last year and talked about how he was a member of one of the first families of Beltway Boxing, the Tuttle family, with Truman Tuttle and and Fred and, and some of the other people involved with the Tuttle family. But we have a number of first families. We have a number of great families, period, in the Beltway Rock Boxing region. Um, but a member of one of the first families of, of Beltway Boxing is not doing very well. And we send our prayers not only to her, but also to her family. We're talking about Brenda Davis. Now, Brenda Davis, she is truly the first lady, not only of Beltway amateur boxing, but maybe amateur boxing throughout the nation. Brenda Davis is the wife of if you talk about a trainer who does not get his just due around the world, who's one of the greatest trainers in the history of this sport, you are talking about Adrian Davis. Adrian Davis, uh, who is still going strong, um, has trained as many world champions as anybody I can think of. And that includes the big guns like Angel Dundee, Freddie Roach, Ernie Futch, Eddie Futch, excuse me, Emmanuel Stewart. He's had Adrian Davis had a hand in so many world champions over the years. We talk about people like William Joppy, Keith Holmes, Isra Gergra, Hasim Rockman, Johnny Tapia, uh, just to name a few of, of some of the great boxers that he worked with over the years. And of course, his own sons, Victor and Demetrius Davis, uh, are part of that legacy as well. And Victor still is a part of that legacy as he is a, uh, uh, it's following in his father's footsteps as a trainer. But Brenda Davis made her mark on the amateur side. And, and both of them did it together as far as the amateurs. But the inroads that Brenda Davis, being one of the few females when she first started to be involved in amateur boxing at all in this country. I believe she's the first female to be inducted into the U.S. Amateur Boxing Hall of Fame. Um. She, I mean, and you look at the it, you look at the Tony Valley Association USA Boxing. There are so many females who are just so good at what they do in that on that side, um, and a lot of them, I think, just about all of them, really were connected through Brenda Davis, and she paved the way for a lot of them. I mean, we can talk about people like Candy Jacobs. Of course, Candy Jacobs had an inroad through her her father, another one of the great trainers, Dave Jacobs, Tamara McKinney, and some of the other young ladies who who have been a part of Potomac Valley Association USA Boxing and still are a part of Potomac Valley Association USA Boxing. I don't think they'd be there, um, or it'd be tougher for them to be there. Let's say if Brenda Davis hadn't been there, and I have. Um, you know, had a lot of great dealings with Brenda Davis. Uh, she actually, when I first really started covering the amateurs and going to amateur shows, um, she was the announcer for a lot of them. So I remember uh, the Platinum Glove, well, Platinum Glove Disco Bobby Jones was, but but um, 
she was there at ringside for that. Um, some of the, the smaller cards I had a chance to do. She was the one I always got the information for who won. And it was, uh, you know, that's how I got a chance to work with her for many years um, in in that capacity. Um, the word on Miss Davis, Miss B, as everybody called her, calls her. Um, she's not doing well. We are hearing, um, I believe she has a, a form of Alzheimer's. And according to her daughter, um, she does not have long from what I've heard. And, you know, again, you know, like if you know me, God has the final answer to that. We know that. Um, those who don't believe that, that's entirely up to you. But I believe that. And we're just praying for her, her health. And, you know, she's someone who I, you know, just, I have to, every time I see her, I always give her a hug because I know what kind of contribution she has made. And I always try to greet uh, Adrian Davis, Mr. Davis, because of the contributions he has made over the years and continues to make over the years. He, she, he's still working with, with boxers in this area, both on the pro and amateur side. And their contributions to the Beltway are immeasurable. They they owned a gym, round one gym, all through that that were in many places around the around the Beltway area, primarily in Maryland. Um, and I remember talking to Adrian Davis about that, and and Brenda Davis too, for that matter. I did an interview with them about them years ago, and it wasn't so much about the champions or the great boxers that came out of that gym, and they were many. Don't get me wrong, they were many. But it was about the lives that they changed in the young people, the the young people they kept off the streets over the years, the young people who went on and they may have stopped boxing, but they went on to become great citizens in in the area and around the country. That's what it was about for Adrian Brenner Davis. Um, And. You know, they had tough times keeping that gym afloat, unfortunately. Uh, Adrian trains a lot of his boxers now out of the Sugar Ray Leonard Boxing Center in Palmer Park, where the Golden Gloves will be. But it was amazing to see them work. Amazing the patience that they had. And amazing to see the successes that came out of that gym. And you know, through through his, you know, on the pro side, I, I gave you all the champions. You look at what Victor Davis, especially Demetrius Davis had a lot of talent. He just had some demons that he had to deal with. Um, Victor was able to to forge a pretty good career. Of course, he'll always be remembered for that tremendous boxing match in Philadelphia in 1990 uh, against Vincent Petway out of Baltimore. And, uh, um, I chronicled that on uh, just a, just an aside story on this real quickly. Um, Victor and, and Vincent are both quality trainers. Uh, Victor, as I said, is taking, you know, continue the legacy that his father had. And Vincent Petway is, is continuing the legacy in Baltimore that his trainer, Mac Lewis, the legendary Mac Lewis, uh, had in Baltimore. And they were at a card at a weigh in for a card we had here in D.C. a couple of years ago. And I happened to be the person that kind of um, coordinated the weigh in as far as, uh, you know, uh, introducing the boxers as they came to the scale that particular day. And I saw the two in the same room and I couldn't let it pass by. And I had them pose for a picture. And uh, it, it was a wonderful moment. It really was just a wonderful moment. But that's the type of history that and legacy that these boxers have made and these trainers have left. And I don't want to go too, too far from the subject. So let me just say that I, I, I just wish and prayers go out to Brenda Davis and the whole Davis family. But that leads to another quick point I want to make before I get out of here as well. We hear a lot of things about boxing, how father son trainers don't work too well. And in in the beltway, it's not true. By and large, it's not true. 
when you look at the Davises, when you look at the Johnsons, Mark and Ham Johnson, and you look at um, the Peterson brother, and Barry Hunter is the father figure for Lamont and Anthony Peterson. So that, that falls in that category. Look at Scott and Andrew Farmer. Uh, that was a great father-son combination. Mark Tucker, late Mark Tucker Sr. and his son, Mark Jr., TNT Tucker, uh, another one. Um, hasn't always completely worked. You know, you had the situation with the Hintons, uh, Jamal Hinton and his father, Junius. Jamal, it wasn't so much that he didn't want, Jamal didn't want his father as a trainer. Jamal didn't want to box anymore at that particular time. He was, And he was one of the, the bright lights of this area. He was one of the best uh, uh, lightweights in the country, um, had won the Continental America's title, and just decided he didn't want to box anymore. He, his, uh, he decided to lean on his faith, and he his faith, he felt at that time, would not allow him to box, and uh, he got out of the sport. And from what I heard, it did cause a little bit of a rift between the, the father and the son that has been long since patched up. Matter of fact, uh, Jamal has sons boxing his, in his own right. So that's the only time when it ever came close. It just didn't work. And it's not it didn't work for a lot of reasons that other father sons don't work. Um, you know, look at Dusty and Buddy Harrison. Uh, you know, it, it, it's it's all over the place. I mean, it, it is. We have a very tight knit group in the Beltway. And I'm, I'm saying this to people who don't know who are outside the area that not only are they looking for their own family, they're looking out for other people. And of course, how can we forget the Russell family? Of course, we've talked about the Russell family on numerous occasions, but um, it just seems to work in this area. And maybe because we are a small area and, and I, uh, every time I, I, I keep talking, I think about another one, Mike Reed and uh, and his father, Buck Pinson. Um, you know, it, it, it's just so many that the Fox family, uh, Troy Fox, uh, Michael and, uh, and Lantes Fox. I mean, there's just so many that work so well. Jordan White and his father, John White is a new one on the scene. I mean, it, it, it's just so many that have, that have worked and I don't know why it's worked and why it continues to work, but I just hope it does. Because we are setting, as we as we continue to say, we're setting standards here. This is this is this is becoming a year of trying to set some standards, some new standards for boxing in this area. This is what this group, this next wave we talked about three or four years ago, is trying to do. They're trying to set new standards in here. And, and granted, there's nothing to to say about against what they set before, because if it wasn't for what the four kings, Sean Bay Mitchell, Mark Johnson. Keith Holmes, William Joppy, and all the other contenders around him um, have done. Um, there wouldn't be a, a possibility for this next wave to achieve it, the 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 uh, success they have achieved so far and are continuing to achieve. Um, so it it is it is fabulous. It is fabulous. Speaking of one of the next wave, we also got to send our prayers to the family of Andrew Council. Uh, another one of those great contenders back in the nineties, uh, also great trainer in his own right right now. Uh, Andrew council lost his mother, uh, earlier this week. So we want to send our prayers out to, uh, the council war and his family as well. But, um, it's been a tremendous experience and this group wants to set new standards for this area. And we only can wish them the best to do that. So, uh, once again, reminder, the uh, Malik Hawkins will be on CBS Sports Network uh, Friday night, uh, uh, February 19th in Sloan, Iowa. And that'll be on CBS Sports Network is scheduled for eight o'clock Eastern time. Jerry, the King's son, Odom, will be a part of a Showbox card. This is his fifth straight time on Showbox. And he will be on that card against Ronald Ellis. And uh, that'll be on uh, Friday night. Around 10, I think it's around 10 o'clock, 1030. So, by the way, uh, Malik Hawkins is fighting Cody Coleman, uh, who's 1-0. and And so that'll be that card. Uh, February 20th, the Washington Golden Gloves get on the way at the Sugar Ray Leonard Boxing Club in uh, Community Center, I should say, in Palm Park, Maryland. And, of course, one week from then, a week later, we'll be at the Washington Convention Center for the King's Motions card uh, featuring... Um, 
uh, Daniel Ata taking on Ty Barnett in the main event. So stay with us right here on the Box on Belt. We Google that for Android and on Spreaker.com, iHeartRadio.com, and YouTube to hear all the latest from the Beltway boxing scene. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Gary Digital Williams saying so long and always remember, keep supporting the best boxing in the world, the boxing along the Beltway. Take care.